Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is the fourth lecture of the Dynamic Programming course series, and this is part, uh, I mean, course part one. So this is the fourth lecture, and in this lecture we are going to study about subsets and bit mask. So this is an introductory video to the subset and bit mask, so it is going to be a little easy. So let's take an example, and we'll uh, explore the, uh, this example. And then we'll see how uh, the bit mask helps solving the problem like these. So you are given an array of size and print all two raised power n subset. So if you remember, if there are uh, if there is a set with n elements in it, then there are two raised power n different subsets of that set. Or basically, the cardinality of the power set is two raised power n. So, for an example, if I have a set which has three elements in it, A, B, and C, the power set would look like this. There'd be an empty set, then three sets with one element in it, three set with two element in it, and then there is, uh, then this, the complete set. So, in total, if there are n elements, then there exist uh, two raised to the power n. Uh, subset in it so the problem is how you can uh, the very basic problem would be how you can print all the subsets of a given set so if you see if I write down the subsets like this and also with them if I write down uh, all the three bit numbers you see the number follow from 0 to 2 raised to power 3 minus 1 which is 7 so the number goes from 0 to 7 and if you see uh, these uh, these are actually all the possible combination of 3 bit numbers right these are the uh, all 3 bit numbers these are only possible configuration of 3 bits now can you find out the relationship between the these 3 bit numbers and the subsets if it is getting hard or if it is being hard to find out the relation let's just do this instead of 3a4 3 and 4 I have flipped them so it is now 4 I am writing down 4 first and then 3 the rest are same there are still seven, 8 numbers 0 to 7 I have just flipped these two numbers or their position simply so if you see the first number is 0 0 0 and the first subset we have is an empty set so the relation if you see from in these two is that there are uh, in the subset there is no element and in this number there is no set bit if you see these three subsets all these three subsets are having a single element in them and so are these three numbers these three numbers also are having only one set bit in them now these three subsets are having two elements in them and so are these three uh, and so is true for these three numbers these three numbers are having two set bits the last set is having three elements and the last number is having three set bits so we can clearly see there is a relation between the subsets and the uh, bit uh, n bit number so if you have a set with n element the total number of uh, subset would be 2 raised to power n and if you have a, a string binary string of length n the total number of configuration are 2 raised to power n so we can see there is direct correlation between the subsets and the number if you see wherever there exists a you see these are the subsets where a exists the zeroth bit is set in the number so here you can see zeroth bit is set uh, the ms uh, msb the maximum uh, sig uh, significant bit is the leftmost so this is the second bit and this is the zeroth bit so if you see th these four set subsets contain a and these four number this 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 and this these are the only four numbers in which the zeroth bit is set so there is a relation between the zeroth bit and a and so is true for b and so is true for c so if to, you have to find all the subset all you can do is run a loop from 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1 and then if the ith bit is set then the ith element exists in the subset 
for example if you look at 5 so 0th and 2nd uh, bit are set so this set this subset contains two elements 0th element that is a and uh, element at the second index which is c so ac so to generate all the subset all you gotta do is run a loop from 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1 and for each number check whether the ith bit is set or not if the ith bit is set simply print that number this way you can generate all possible subsets of a given set now if you do not know how to check whether the ith bit is set or not in a number you can do it uh, like this uh, take a number f as 1 raised to uh, 1 left shifted i times so left shift is this uh, this number 1 i am taking it to be 8 bit though it is a th it would be if you are taking int so it would be 32 bit number i am just taking first 8 bits so uh, the 0th bit would be set the rest would be 0 so if you left shift 1 this is 1 uh, i times or in this case 3 times what would happen 3 bits would be discarded and 3 0 bit would be appended at the beginning so this would look something like this this is how left shifting this is called left shifting works uh, basically left shifting means uh, if you are shifting an integer i times then you are multiplying that integer with 2 raised to power i and why is that so uh, for, for an example if you are left shifting an integer whose value is 5 and you are left shifting 5 3 times so it would become 40 because 5 into 2 raised to power 3 because you are left shifting it 3 times so it would become 5 into 2 raised to power 3 which is 5 into 8 that is 40 so we are left shifting i uh, one i time so what would happen only the ith bit uh, taking one uh, is a is the reason because one the integer one contains only a single bit so if you left shift one i times then in the resulting number only the ith bit would be set so to check whether n this number contains ith bit set or not just just create a new number f uh, as one is uh, left shifted i times then the ith bit in f would be set and take the bitwise and operation of n and f so what would happen since only the ith bit is set in f if you take and operation of these two the rest would be zero because the rest bits are zero so the rest bits would be zero if the ith bit in n is set then uh, the resultant would also contain the ith bit as set so if the resultant doesn't contain ith bit as set so the rest would be zero the complete number would be zero so if n and f basically bitwise and operation of and uh, n and f if the resultant is zero then the ith bit is not set otherwise the ith bit is set so all you gotta do is create a number uh, f as one left shifted i times and perform an uh, bitwise and operation if the resultant is zero then the ith bit in n is zero otherwise ith bit in n is not zero so to generate all the subsets what we are going to do we would read n this indicates the number of elements in the set so the total number of subset would be 2 raised to power n from 0 to 2 raised to power n minus 1 so the total would be basically 2 raised to power n so uh, shifting 1 i n times result into 2 raised to power n so the total number of subset would be 2 raised to power n so n would run from 0 to less than 2 raised to power n and each time in n we would check whether uh, which bits from 0 to this small n minus 1 which element exists so we would run a loop from 0 to n minus 1 small m n minus 1 and check whether ith element exists or not if the ith element exists then uh, their end operation would be non-zero so if i take an example if i explain it through the code i hope th this is visible to you let's create a char character array which would indicate elements in our set a zeroth element is a first element is b c let's for now take only four elements d t test cases and number of element in a set so uh, sorry 
Now in each test case we would read n which would be the number of element in our set. So if n is 2 so our set would be only this right. So now after reading this let's define total which is actually 2 raised to power n which you can create like uh, we, uh, we can initialize it like this 1 left shifted n times which would be basically 1 into 2 raised to power n which is 2 raised to power n which is equal to your uh, total number of subset so n is equals to let's call it mask mask is equals to 0 mask is less than total and mask plus plus now in this mask uh, each in each iteration this mask would actually be a one of our subset so for checking whether the ith element in the subset is present or not we would run a loop till n minus 1 starting from 0 uh, let's uh, yes you have to create f as one left shifted i times because we have to check whether in mask ith element exists or not so if n and uh, f so sorry if their end operation is not equals to zero then the ith element exists in this subset if that happens we would print the ith element and ith element we are having the ith element in here so we would print ith element of ar space and after after this we would print the next line and this should do the work i don't think we should get any error this is just a simple program okay okay there is a simple header file i need to include uh, include windows.h come on uh and was not declared and oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry mask it's mask okay now we are ready uh let's test for five test cases in our subset there are two elements a b and a b the, uh, this is the empty set right uh the space you are seeing between first a and two so this is empty set this is a b and a b these are the only four possible configuration of only four possible sets you would have if our set contains three elements subset would be 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 see a b c a b a c b c and then a b c and this is the empty set now let's see for 4 these are the all possible 16 configuration so this way you can generate uh, this way uh, bit masking is used to generate all the possible subsets there is also a way to generate this using recursion but we would look at that later when where, where we would be studying subset sum uh, DP problem so uh, there is a problem that you can solve using the same concept uh, in fact there are many problems we can solve using the same concept uh, bit masking is sometimes used with uh, of course it is used with DP uh, beside that it is it can also be used with uh, something like uh, uh, principle of inclusion exclusion and binary search and you can always combine this with other concept to make powerful problems so this was it for this uh, lecture i am putting a link uh, of a question in the description so you are asked to solve that problem by your own uh, by yourself that is an easy problem and having knowledge of this thing you should be able to solve that problem so thank you guys for watching until the next video drops keep coding thank you